So let me introduce this quickly. Um, we're testing these uh, circuit breakers. These uh, 125 amp uh, circuit breakers for our solar and battery system. And uh, after our previous experience with the circuit breakers that we bought from Amazon uh, for like automotive use, um, and that was completely failing and like being uh, either opening way too soon or way too, too late. Uh, we realized that we now need to test everything by from Amazon basically, so, uh, or from pretty much anywhere nowadays. So what we did is we rigged up this uh, circuit breaker to our DC system. This is a 12 volt system, but that's the only thing we have to test it for right now. Uh, ultimately, this is going on to a 48 volt system. And we can precisely load um, the circuit breaker and see how it responds. Uh, right now we loaded it, um, we connected the minus side. For some reason, the circuit breaker has um, the minus, uh, the terminals labeled as the minus and the plus. So we connected the minus side to the batteries, uh, negative, and the plus to, well, going forward to the, to the negative side of the battery, uh, to, to our negative side of all of our electronics. Maybe it's supposed to be flipped. So we're going to flip it right now and see if it performs better. But in our previous test, in this configuration, we loaded it to 240 amps. And at 240 amps, oh, there's my meter. At 240 amps, um, it was heating up a lot, but it wasn't popping. And after about two or three minutes, it was getting so hot, I was concerned that maybe we hooked it up backwards or something. So um, we disconnected it. We didn't let it melt down, but it probably would have melted down had um, had we not disconnected. So let's see if it performs any better in the other orientation. I just wanted to show you guys quickly that the quality is truly impressive. Truly impressive quality. I'm just lightly screwing it in so I have to hold the look and tighten it. All right, let's get it tested. Okay, so we hooked, so we, uh, we hooked it up. Uh, we're gonna turn on the system. Oh, actually, let's turn it on here last. So let's go up front. We're going to close up. Our so in here, this is our inverter um, switch. So we're going to close the power supply to the inverter. This is how we can monitor how many amps we're drawing. Right. So now I'm going to close the switch. And our inverter just pulled up. Now we're drawing a little bit of power for the inverter to do its electronics things. Okay, so now we're going to turn on our heater. This is a, just a heater plugged into an inverter to put a load onto the system. So let's put it to low, which corresponds to uh, 60 amps thereabouts. And the circuit breaker is doing fine. Let's double check how the circuit breaker is doing. So it's doing pretty well. Nothing is heating up. Okay. Can you actually go ahead and turn it up to high? So at high, we are at 121 amps, which is the target range for the circuit breaker. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on my multimeter, switch it to volts, and we're going to measure voltage drop in between the pins and the voltage drop at full load is 73 millivolts, mm -hmm. right? So we can do a quick calculation. So we'll do uh, 0 0.073 times 121 amps, and that gets us 8.8 .8 watts. So that means at full load, this uh, circuit breaker or switch, as I'm going to call it for now, um, dissipates about 8.8 .8 watts. That's uh, that's fine. That's uh, it can handle that pretty much all day long. So I, I think we should be fine there. So it should work as a good 121 amp capable switch, which is already nice. But let's go ahead and turn on our second heater, which is also plugged in into our inverter. So now we are up to 223 amps. 223, uh, 218, 
that when that thing heats up, it drops down a little bit. So 200, 200, let's see what we go below. In any case, right now we're like in that range and this thing is getting hot. We are experiencing more voltage drop for sure, I would imagine. Yeah, 136 millivolts. <clears throat> so at this point right now, 136. Now we dissipating 16 watts. Now this is going to start melt, start to melt pretty soon. At 16 watts, I think. But anyways, it keeps going. 196 amps. It hasn't blown yet. Let's put on uh, to the second speed, so to speak. Load it up more. No, the second, the other one. Is it with this one? Uh huh. Yeah. Boom. Okay, now we're at 240 amps. 243 amps. 236. Dude. Dropping quickly for some reason. 220. So 219. So 219 amps. And it's getting very hot. It's not breaking. It's getting very hot, but it's not breaking. Oh! Did it break? No. Something cracked inside of it. 176 millivolts. 176. 21 watts. Basically, it's becoming its own little space heater at this point. And it broke. So at the time when it broke, it was pulling 220, 230 amps or so. So 230 amps for, I guess that's okay, maybe. For our solar system? For, for our solar system, this is fine. Because we're going to have fuses before it anyway. Mm -hmm. But is it reliable enough? Yeah, that's a little suspicious that it took that much heat and that much, but it's better than the other ones we tested. Mm, that's right? true. All right. Um, so not a thumbs up because it should have popped a lot sooner than that, but a thumbs up ish. Like it, it works as a good switch and it will eventually break. But if you use one of these, I would recommend put a good fuse uh, in front of it or, you know, to protect your electronics, don't rely on the rated breaking breaking capacity uh, at one the rated breaking capacity. Because we had it running for three four minutes yeah. at, and it wasn't popping. And also, what we learned is it doesn't seem to matter uh, which way you orient it, where you whether you put the plus, like whether the plus goes on this side or the plus goes on this side. Should we try to replicate this test again? With the plus on the other side? Yeah, just to double check that it All really right. doesn't matter. All right, we'll come back in a moment and okay. we'll replicate it again with the switch re reversed to double check that it really doesn't matter. And that it actually breaks at 220 for like three to four minutes. Okay, let's try it again. Yeah. So we're going to try the same thing again in a few minutes. So we are now running the test with the circuit breaker set up with the minus side pointing towards the negative of the battery and the plus, plus side going towards like the, the rest of the electronics as the ground um so basically we just flipped the circuit breaker around to see if it performs the same way for the last couple of minutes we've been running it at uh, 120 amps we were also testing because one of our switches is acting up a little bit and has been heating up um but now we're going to go ahead and turn on that guy over there You have to press the power button. And switch it all the way to the max. Okay, so now we are at 230, 253, 260 amps. Yeah, I'll show. 260 amps. And then slowly falling. Um, you should have started with a timer. Yeah. Can you use a, a, this cardboard and uh, squeeze that switch so it conducts better? Oh, 
What happened? Oh, that thing shut off. Uh, one of our heaters shut, shut off. Yeah. Huh? Doesn't have to be hard. Oh. Shut Maybe off it's, again. it's getting water? Okay, uh, let's pause again. We'll come back with a different heater. Okay, we're trying it again. We're at 230 amps, just a little. Uh, and uh, 220 amps, 219. And let's see how our switch is doing right here. It's not breaking. It's not breaking yet, which is suspicious. Okay, here we're at the switch, and it's hot, but it's not breaking at 218 amps, so it's almost twice its rated capacity, and not yet. Oh, there you go, it popped. So it popped after about two minutes at 200 amps, minutes, yeah. three minutes. Okay, um, I mean reasonably that's not ideal as a circuit breaker but since we're going to be probably hooking it up behind um fuse like these one of these fuses like this anyway um it makes sense for us to go with it as just a high amp switch that also does have the ability to pop um if it you know goes too high for too long okay not not too bad still not a thumbs up uh, about right there, you know, not quite what it promises, but close enough. All right. Hey everyone, so today we are also testing this um, circuit breaker, this DC circuit breaker. I needed to use it on a solar system, but before putting it on a solar system, after our previous experiences, uh, we needed to test it. So here it's connected to my Vans uh, battery system. It's a 12 volt battery system. Doesn't really matter. This is the negative side of the system. Um, we connected it to what I presume is the negative side of the circuit breaker, though I think it doesn't really matter how you use them based on our testing. And then the other side is connected to the ground of the vehicle. So basically all the electricity out of the battery is going to be flowing through this uh, circuit breaker here. And now we close the system here and we turn on our inverter. Oh, hold on. <laughs> we have to. Actually, it's, it's a little confusing because green means that it's off and red means that it's on. But anyways, so let's turn on the inverter. Oh, and it popped right away. Couldn't even boot up. Oh, that's weird. Huh. Okay, we'll have to develop. Oh. Does it draw 20 amps off the bat? Ah, uh, to charge those. Let's... Turn it off. Okay. So. Okay, and we are back. We are at 18 amps. I had to turn on the uh, air conditioner, the fan for the air conditioner at least. The uh, thing is not very hot, so that's good. At 18 amps, it seems to be doing good. We figured out that we could turn on our lights to increase the amperage, so let's pop, let's increase. It's to 18.8. I'll just turn all the lights on. 21.6. Okay, I feel like that's not gonna do it because these things do. But then again, they pop with the inverter pretty easily and pretty rapidly. Um, if I turn on the air conditioner, it will immediately pop, probably, but I mean, what do we have to lose, right? So let's go ahead and turn it on. Oh no, actually, I don't want to hard shut down the air conditioner. 
But then why not, right? Do you think it matters? Let's try it. There's the air conditioner. Oh, and there you go. So it popped at 30 amps. Okay. So these uh, are big thumbs up. They break when they're supposed to, for the most part. Um, they carry 20 amps just fine. We were running it. And they don't heat up. So, thumbs up.